Let's start with this photo. Do you know any of these people? Let me go to pointer option. Maybe I'll take pen. I know this person. And maybe I know this person. Do you know any one of them? Anyone else? Maybe her. She looks familiar to me. Anyway, I went to Google and I gave a search with a particular characteristic. Can you tell me what is that characteristic that I looked for? Yes. Spectacles. How many are wearing spectacles? What proportion? If wearing a spectacle is considered as having a particular health condition, then what proportion are having this health condition in this picture? And what measure of disease occurrence can be called for that proportion? In this case, we were looking at prevalence which is a proportion which is part of the whole so it can which can range from 0 to 1 it is a binary outcome whether you are, you are wearing spectacles or not in this case the proportion was 1 hundred percent but in real life for any particular health condition the proportion can vary from 0 to 1 Prevalence refers to the proportion of the population with the disease at some point in time. It is a measure of disease burden. It is a snapshot. Remember I took that snapshot from Google. Now disease prevalence can be of two types. It can be point prevalence or period prevalence. Is your child sick today? If we go to do a survey and asking from door to door, is your child sick today if they have a child at home? We were measuring the point prevalence of a particular illness on that particular day. Period prevalence, is your child sick today or was your child sick anytime during the last two weeks? So we are asking about the presence or absence of a particular health condition in a defined population for a period of time. Now what are the factors that influence prevalence? How about prevalence of cough and cold among school children? Will it be high? How about prevalence of type 2 diabetes among adults after 40 years of age. Will that be high as well? The prevalence of cough and cold will be high among school children because it occurs more frequently, it is more common. The incidence of cough and cold is quite high. On the other hand, if someone develops diabetes, that is a lifelong health condition. So the duration of that illness is very long. That's why the prevalence of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, among adults after 40 years of age, whenever you take a snapshot, it will be quite high. What is incidence then? It refers to new cases. In the previous example, we did not ask how many of you have recently started wearing spectacles. We just wanted to know what proportion of the people there were wearing spectacles at that particular point in time. But for incidence, we refer to new cases of disease that occur in a population at risk that is followed over time. Steps, we have to identify a population at risk, those who do not have the disease of interest. Follow them over a period of time to see how many of them develop the disease as new cases and then record them as they occur. So incidence 
can be measured as a proportion which is known as incidence proportion or cumulative incidence. In that case, we will measure the proportion of a population at risk that develops the disease during a fixed period of follow-up. So, for example, if A is the number of subjects developing disease during a time period and N is the number of subjects followed for the time period, then the incidence proportion or cumulative incidence or risk is A over N. Now, this value tends to increase with increased period of follow-up. That's why we need to specify time period. Let's look at this example. Women who are 60 years of age have a 2% risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. What does this statement mean? Is something missing in this statement? Yes. A fixed period of follow-up is needed. We need to tell whether they are at risk of dying from cardiovascular disease over the next 5 years or 10 years. Maybe over the next 50 years, the risk will be close to 100%. So we need to mention a fixed period of follow-up. There are problems with cumulative incidence because we are assuming that everyone observed for the period of follow-up, which is not true. We are not going to be able to observe everyone for the entire period of follow-up. Why? Because People can develop other health conditions. People can die, which is called competing risks. People can be lost to follow up. They may move to another place. They may not want to respond to our surveys. That's why we need to measure incidence rate, which is another type of measurement of incidence. So far, we were discussing about cumulative incidence or cumulative proportion, but we need to measure incidence rate to get rid of those two problems competing risk and loss to follow up so for incidence rate we measure the number of new cases developed per unit person time it can be person years accounts for varying periods of follow up by using person years or person time the denominator is no longer individuals it is the sum of each individual's time at risk. So the incidence rate is no longer a proportion. It is the number of new cases divided by total person time at risk. Let's look at this example. Healthy period. So these are the healthy period. Disease period. So these are the disease period then we have loss to follow up. We talked about competing risks, which is death. How many individuals are here? 10. This is taken from the famous Essential Epidemiology book written by Webb and Ben. I think in the recent version, they have added a new author as well. Now, how many individuals are here? 10 individuals. The question is, what was the prevalence of the disease on the 1st of January 2003? So this is the beginning of January 2003. How many individuals were there in the denominator? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This person was lost to follow up. 8, 9. So out of 9, how many were having the disease? This person and this person. So it should be 2 over 9. That was the prevalence of the disease. Now, what is the incidence rate of the disease per 100 person years? We need to calculate the person time for each of the individuals contributed to this follow-up period. So the first person was there throughout the whole, how many years? To, from 2000 to 2007. Whole seven years of follow-up. So that person contributed seven years. This person developed the illness here. So that person was no longer at risk. So that person contributed 5.5 years. So we'll have to calculate like that. And we'll have to calculate the total person time 
and then how many develop the illness during this entire follow-up period one two three and four so it would be four over that person time how about cumulative incidence or incidence proportion over the same follow-up period out of ten four develop the disease so the incidence proportion would be 0.4 or 4 by 10 over how many years you need to mention the years of follow-up for cumulative incidence over seven years I hope I could clarify the things a little bit to you and I hope I didn't confuse you much thanks for your patient hearing